Hello community, this is Kim Dempsey, Henry County Medical Center's Chief Clinical Dietitian and Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist. Coming to you today to talk a little bit about heart healthy diet and a little bit about heart healthy lifestyle. February is American Heart Month where we talk about heart health awareness and heart disease awareness. Currently about 407,000 Tennesseans do you have heart disease? We wanna make sure that we know who's at risk and what to do to keep our hearts healthy and what to do to treat heart disease with nutrition if we know that we have that. People are considered to be at risk if they have any of the three following conditions. Women whose waist circumference is greater than 35 inches and men whose waist circumference is greater than 40 inches a fasting triglyceride level of greater than 150, a fasting HDL or good cholesterol level of less than 40, so we want that number to be 40 or above, ideally 50 or above for women, blood pressure greater than 130 over 85, or if you are treated with a blood pressure lowering medication, you would be, that is a risk factor and also a fasting glucose of greater than 100 is a risk factor for heart disease. Um, also, the American College of Cardiologists has a really good risk factor calculator um, on their website, so that, can, that is easily found by just um, in your search engine, typing in ASCVD, um, risk calculator and it should pop right up for you and you input different health health factors for yourself so you indicate your age and if you have um, high blood pressure or not if you have diabetes or not and other other a few other questions that's very short and then that calculator gives you a risk factor of developing heart disease within the next 10 years and also for your lifespan. So I will share with you that my lifetime risk factor is 39%. I have a 39% chance of developing heart disease in my lifetime, but only a 0.7% risk of developing heart disease within the next 10 years. So when we think about diet and heart health, we kind of look to the American Heart Association for what they recommend because they've taken all the nutrition studies um, that have been done on heart health for the last dec several decades and compile that data and give us recommendations for ways that we can improve our heart health based on those studies. So they kind of group their recommendations into about four different categories. So those are increasing fiber intake, choosing healthy fats, reducing added sugars, and reducing the sodium content of foods. So I, for you, have tips within each of those categories, as well as after that, we'll move into some lifestyle tips. I have one for every day of February. So we're gonna move through 28 tips that you can use to improve your heart health over the next month. First, whole grains are a great option. So if you are a grain eater, you wanna make sure that most of those grains are whole grains. So that means things like 100% whole wheat breads or 100% whole grain breads, um, brown rice, popcorn, uh, oatmeal, all those things are good examples of, of whole grains, which will automatically increase your fiber intake. We know that fruits and vegetables are high in fiber, but also the people who eat more of those foods are generally healthier than people who don't eat them at all or don't eat very much of them. So one of the best things we can do for our heart health and for general health is to eat more fruits and vegetables. So that can mean fresh, frozen, or canned. Um, if you are choosing canned fruits and vegetables, you wanna be sure to watch the label to make sure that you're not getting a lot of added sodium or sugars, but if they're um, varieties, that are packed in water and not sugar, example for fruits, or um, if they're not, if they're a no salt added variety of, of a canned vegetable, that can be as healthy a choice as fresh. Along with that, if you will keep your 
fresh fruits and vegetables ready to go. Um, Pre-chopped, pre-packaged. Um, we tend to eat things better and more readily when they are quickly available to us. So if the day that you do your grocery shopping, if you will bring those foods in and get them kind of prepared and ready to go, you're more likely to consume the amounts that you need of fresh fruits and vegetables. Try a meatless meal each week. Meatless Mondays were a big thing a few years ago. Um, that was kind of pushed by um, American Heart Association as well as some other groups to encourage us to eat more vegetables. So when we remove meats from a meal, um, you know, that's, that's a very easy way to promote us eating more vegetables um, in that meal. So that can be something as simple as like a portobello mushroom burger or something a little bit more complex um, like a veggie lasagna. Take care of your gut health with probiotics and fiber. So this could be a whole talk all by itself. We know that fiber is a source of food for the healthy gut bacteria that we need to maintain our general health. The more good bacteria we have in our GI tract, the less likely we are to have certain chronic diseases, including obesity, including type two diabetes, so, um, and certain type of, types of cancers. So gut health is a huge thing. Um, so eating fiber will only to help her to promote that. Moving on to fats and the recommendations there from American Heart. Um, know that not all fats are created equal. Some fats are better for us than others. So if we can use things like olive oil, canola oil, avocado oil um, in place of especially solid fats, those are shown to help to raise our good or HDL cholesterol um, and help to lower our LDL cholesterol. Eat fish that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Think oily fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, those types of fish. The recommendation is at least a three ounce serving at least twice a week. So if you are not eating that amount of um, cold water or fatty fish that are high in the omega-3 fats, um, you can supplement with uh, a fish oil supplement or like a krill oil supplement or something like that that's going to give you those omega-3 fats. When we think about choosing healthy fats, that goes hand in hand with choosing lean protein sources. So things like chicken, fish, beans are all protein sources that limit the unhealthy fats. Beans also are gonna give us some added fiber um, and promote heart health in that way as well. Eating nuts, a handful of nuts um, or seeds um, can be an excellent snack. They're high, they are high in fat, but it's a heart healthy fat. Again, that promotes the um, increase in HDL that we're looking for, because um, HDL is heart protective. So we want that to be as high as we can get it. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're using unsalted or lightly salted nuts and pretty much any type of nut is going to have those heart healthy fats that we're looking for. Ditch the deep fryer. So when we deep fry foods, or especially if we're getting them in restaurants, um, deep fried foods tend to not be fried in our most heart friendly oils. So um, if we can decrease the amount of deep fried foods in our diet, um, we tend to increase our heart health. Avoiding trans fats is a really big key to heart health. Um, trans fats are man-made fats that um, promote inflammation, um, raising of LDL, um, all the things that we don't want when we think about being heart healthy. So um, the reason that, they're, that they are used is that they're very shelf stable and they don't tend to become rancid for very long periods of time. So we tend to find trans fats in our high fat store-bought goods. So like store-bought um, cakes, cookies, pies, things like that tend to have um, higher amounts of trans fats. Um, we want to avoid those if at all possible um, because they are hi highly inflammatory and um, have a negative impact on our heart health. So moving on to sugar. Um, just in the last few years, the American Heart Association has um, adopted a policy of um, 
avoiding added sugars in the diet. And um, prior to that, um, we were less aware of the effect of sh that sugars had on heart health. Um, so my first tip for sugar is don't drink it. Um, if you think about beverages, think about um, unsweetened teas, uh, sparkling waters, infused waters, things like that, things that aren't going to have added sugars. Eat real food. So if some of your favorite foods um, have like bright orange cheese dust on them, that is probably not a, a great choice. Um, so if you can eat less processed things in general, you're going to be getting um, less added sugars, less added salt. Um, so just think about, you know, you may have heard if you show this, your a food to your great grandparents, would they recognize it as food or would they say, what is that? So that's kind of a, a fun way to know it, you know, just how highly, how highly processed a food may be. Um, so think about, you know, doing less of those in your diet and adding more whole foods. Limit traditional dessert foods to special occasions. So um, most of the time, if you feel like you need something sweet after a meal, look for fruit. By all means, don't deny yourself cake on your birthday if that's your favorite thing or whatever your favorite food is. Um, you know, that is a special occasion. But remember that, you know, every weekend is on a special occasion. It happens every week. So um, you wanna make sure that if you're enjoying high fat, high sugar foods, that you truly are doing that on rare or special occasions. So our next group of recommendations is about sodium. Um, so sodium is part of salt. So salt that we eat is sodium chloride. So the sodium part we watch because um, sodium tends to cause uh, fluid retention in our bodies, makes our heart have to work harder to move that extra fluid around, makes our kidneys have to work harder to pull that extra fluid off. So, um, and it can, can have a role in raising blood pressure as well. So those are the reasons that American Heart Association um, really has fairly tight sodium recommendations. Um, so one of the easiest ways that we can limit our sodium intake is to watch for sneaky salt in our diet. So what, that, what I mean by that is that about 75% of all the sodium that, that ever, the average American diet includes is um, from processing or from restaurant foods. So if you're eating in restaurants less and if you're eating less processed foods, you're automatically going to be getting less sodium in your diet. Um, so very little sodium that we get is actually from what we add out of the salt shaker. Read nutrition labels. The only way that we know just how much sodium or really anything else that is in our foods, um, especially our processed foods, is to look at that nutrition label. So um, remember that any food with less than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving would be considered a low sodium food. Um, any food with more than about 300 milligrams of sodium per serving, you may have trouble fitting in your diet if you're following the American Heart Association guidelines for sodium intake. So aim to cook more at home than eating out. Again, we do get a lot of our sodium from, from restaurant foods. Um, so when you cook at home, you are completely in control of what goes into that food. So you can make sure that it is low sodium. Um, you can make sure that you're using healthy fats. You can make sure that it's an appropriate portion size. Um, so cooking at home more than eating out is always beneficial to our nutrition and our heart health. Try new cooking methods. So when we cook, especially like a vegetable in a different way, it can have a totally different flavor. So if we um, take the same vegetable and steam it or grill it or roast it, it's going to have a different flavor. Um, so, you know, most people that think they don't like a certain vegetable, um, they may have had it steamed, um, and that's when the, the true flavors of the vegetables are a little more pungent. Um, but if you take that same vegetable and roast it in the oven um, with a little 
like olive oil and garlic powder. Um, it brings out a whole different flavor of the vegetable, it almost caramelizes it a bit and gives it a, a different flavor, flavor profile. Um, so that can be a great alternative to trying new vegetables is to cook them in a different way. Focus on flavors. So if you try new herbs and spices or an herb and spice blend, that can take the place of, of feeling like you need to use more salt. Um, and it can really bring out the flavor of different foods. So adding like a splash or a squeeze of lime juice or lemon juice to your food um, can, can really help to feel like we need less salt on our food. So we would be remiss to talk about heart health and not talk about some lifestyle factors that can improve our heart health in general. Namely, don't smoke, do drugs, or drink alcohol to excess. So if you have a problem with drugs or alcohol, or if you smoke, you have a bigger problem than nutrition. So I, if I were you, I would recommend addressing those issues first and working on nutrition secondary to that. Schedule a time each week to plan healthy meals. You may have heard the saying, failure to plan is planning to fail. And that's really true when it comes to food and nutrition. So, you know, if you take a time each week to sit down with your coupons or your grocery store ads and make a list and, you know, really plan what you're gonna eat for the week, you're setting yourself up for success and with having healthy foods and having, um, knowing when you're gonna cook what and just really being able to make good choices without grating the pantry at the end of the day. Drink water, especially before meals. This is a tip that's been around longer than I have. You know, if we start drinking water about 20 minutes before a meal, we tend to eat less at that meal. Um, also, recent research has shown that people who drink at least eight cups of water a day burn about 100 more calories a day when we adjust for weight and muscle mass and all those things, um, people who drink more water tend to burn more calories. So that's an, yet another reason to, to drink plenty of water. Remember that serving size and portion size are not synonyms. So serving size, when we look at our food labels, that's the amount that the, everything on that label is based on. Okay, our portion size is what we actually eat. So unless those match, they don't mean the same thing. Being aware of what a serving size is um, and maybe periodically measuring your foods to make sure they're not extremely in excess of what a recommended serving size would be is always a good idea. Get enough sleep. There has been tons of research done in the last couple of decades on the connection of sleep and weight and chronic diseases. So there is a 100% chance that if you've seen me as a patient for weight management in the last five years, I've asked you about your sleep. Um, so we know that people who don't sleep well or don't sleep enough um, tend to gain more weight than people who have healthy sleep habits. So if you need help sleeping, um, you know, think of ways that you can, that that help that do help you to sleep to set up those healthy sleep environments um, and also if if sleep is a real issue to you for you you may need to talk to your um, primary care provider about medication that can help you to sleep also don't be afraid of coffee i have a lot of people who are shocked that I drink coffee and that it's not a problem for the, them to do so either. Unless your doctor has specifically told you to avoid caffeine, there's really no reason to do that. There are certain medications that, you know, you really want to watch the amount of caffeine that you're consuming, but um, in general, caffeine in intake is not detrimental to our health. Um, lots of studies have shown that people who drink coffee um, usually at least about four cups a day is where the research is done. Um, people who drink coffee at those levels have actually been shown to have less type 2 diabetes and less um, neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. 
Also, it's okay to eat eggs. Um, eggs are one of our most nutrient-dense foods. Um, there is no longer a, a recommendation or restriction on them from American Heart Association. All the research that's been done in the last 20 years does not point to a connection to egg consumption and heart disease. Do some cardio, so aerobic exercise. Um, anything that gets your heart rate up. The recommendation um, is at least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity ex exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity ex exercise or some combination of that. So anything that you enjoy doing that, that's movement, that raises your heart rate, gets you breathing a little hard, um, that's what we're looking for at at least 150 minutes a week. Lift heavy things. In addition to your cardio exercise, we wanna have at least two sessions a week of weight um, bearing exercises or strengthening exercises. So, um, so lifting weights, doing body weight exercises, um, anything that can maintain or build muscle mass, especially as we age, um, it's going to be beneficial to our heart health as well as our overall health. Finally, change your mindset and enjoy your food. So it is unfortunate to me when I hear people talk about making changes that promote a more healthy diet that see it as a punishment. Um, it's never a punishment to, to eat healthfully. Um, it's a privilege and um, it, it's, a, it's always a good thing to, to use our diet to improve our health. Um, so, you know, try to make it more of what we call an addition mindset rather than a subtraction mindset. So instead of really focusing on all the things, I'm not supposed to have that, I'm not supposed to have that. Um, think of all the literally millions of foods that you can eat that are healthy for you and that can help you to maintain your health. So when we talk about an addition mindset, try new things like add a new fruit or vegetable to your grocery list each week and enjoy your food.